Good afternoon, Robert Scribbler. It is August 24th, 2018. Thank you for joining me for another climate change and clean energy video blog. Now for this segment, I am going to talk about the Chinese economy and carbon emissions future in the balance. China presently is involved in both pursuing a, a path toward economic growth and toward expanding clean energy. And with such a large portion of its traditional or legacy economy involved with fossil fuels, despite the fact that China is rapidly deploying clean energy, any present growth will result in a bump in carbon emissions, even though China's economy is becoming less carbon intensive. And, and this, is, this is a tug of war that is happening in many locations, many regions around the world. And it's one of the reasons why I talk so much about clean energy, because if you have a high proportion of clean energy in the economic system and a growing portion relative to fossil fuels, then economic growth becomes decoupled or less coupled with fossil fuels. And ultimately, economic growth pushes the development of clean energy. Now, at this point, globally and, and locally for China, the, the world system is locked in a battle between these two energy systems. And, and how rapidly clean energy deploys in many ways determines the fate of the world when it comes to preventing climate catastrophe or seeing climate catastrophes locked in more and more. So this, this photograph from the Independent and the Associated Press, as it's noted on Twitter, shows a Chinese city cloaked in air pollution, which is one of the drivers for China transitioning to clean energy, but also one of the larger drivers is human-caused climate change. So taking a look at, at this tug of war, there, are, there were some early indicators that China achieved its clean energy and carbon reduction goals early from the period of 2013 to 2016 through an unprecedented deployment in renewable energy in the form of wind and solar and, and later more and more electrical vehicles. But in addition to that, working to crimp and shut down older, more polluting coal plants and overall putting limits on, on China's massive coal burning industry. And as a result, carbon dioxide emissions, according to various reports, either plateaued for China during this period or even dropped off. And it's worth noting that a new study in nature show, shows a structural decline in China's CO2 emissions through transition in industry and in energy systems. And I'd just like to read a quote from, from this, this new report. And it notes that as part of the Paris Agreement, China pledged to peak its CO2 emissions by 2030. In retrospect, commitment may have been fulfilled as it was being made. China's emissions peaked in 2013 at a level of 9.53 gigatons of CO2 and have declined each year from 2014 to 2016. So China's CO2 emissions optim optimistically did peak in this period. However, the question is, was this a false peak? And it looks like that's the case because recently China has spent a lot of money to invigorate its economy and push more domestic growth and as, as a way of, uh, you know, the goal being in enhancing prosperity and political support for, for present leaders. But unfortunately, 
as we noted before, since so much of China's present economy is shackled to old fossil fuel burning, the result is a bump in CO2 emissions during the 2017 and early 2018 timeframe. Now, this is a, a bit of a concerning signal, but there are a few caveats that I'd like to add for this signal. I'm also going to call your attention to this report from Greenpeace noting a dramatic surge in China's carbon emission in early 2018. But I'd like to call your attention to a couple of graphs here and just look generally at the longer term trend as it relates to China so that we don't become either over optimistic or over pessimistic. So prior to the, the present period in which China is rapidly deploying renewable energy, China emissions, CO2 emissions peaked or CM2 emission gr growth peaked recently in 2011 at 8.6%, which is a massive increase. Subsequently, China's emissions declined as rates of economic growth drew back, as coal curtailments increased, and as rates of renewable energy deployments increased. So by 2013, the rate of annual CO2 growth for China was 3.2%. And by 2014 and 2015 and 2016, according to this Greenpeace graph, we saw very low CO2 emissions growth and negative CO2 emissions for the two years. Now, subsequently in 2017, economic growth ramped up, in increased demand for energy, primarily oil, gas, and coal increased CO2 emissions. And during the first half of 2018, we saw increased carbon dioxide emissions. But it's worth noting that the bumps in carbon dioxide emissions following China's coal curtailment and path toward increasing renewable energy adoption is not as high as during previous years. So what we're seeing appears to be a cyclical bump. What's important to note is that China's path forward, both with regards to coal curtailment, curtailment in, in gas in the later years, and transitioning ground transportation from oil burning to electrical vehicles will have a major impact in, in these bumps from CO2 emissions going forward as it relates to economic growth. So the larger the proportion of those new clean energy industries, the lower these economic growth related bumps will be. As China decouples its growth from carbon-based, uh, decouples its growth future growth from carbon-based industries. And that's that's why it's so critical to look at this, these, these trends in, in, a, in a broader aspect of, of energy policy. So it's worth noting that, that clean energy is, is very beneficial in a number of respects. And one of those respects being that it creates dramatically more jobs than are lost, which results in more overall economic prosperity. Now, in addition to that, clean energy itself prevents damage to economies by reducing the impact of human-caused climate change. And in a rapid transition to clean energy, the, the amount of damage prevented is potentially in, in literally the trillions of dollars. So urgency for a clean energy transition couldn't be greater. And it's worth noting that the, the context, the present context of carbon emissions bumps shows how harmful being shackled to fossil fuel-based industries is. So thank you for joining me, and I'll be chatting with you soon.